probably pop out after you guys get. Whoa, sorry, I hit that button without going. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is motivating students using technology, incorporating tech into in PE. Uh, I'm Jesse Zimmerman. So what are we gonna be learning today? Um, some strategies, strategies hopefully that you can use to safely and effectively engage your students using technology in your classroom. Why do we wanna do it? Because engaging and motivating students is priority number one, in my opinion, and we want students to be able to learn and being active using technology. So hopefully how you're gonna learn this is you're gonna pick up at least one or two things that you can bring into your classroom right away. So I'm Mr. Zerman, or AKA Mr. Z. Uh, this is my fifth year teaching. Uh, I'm in Las Vegas. I graduated from Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. Uh, I am Shape Nevada president. Uh, so if Shape Nevada stands for the Society of uh, Health and Physical Educators. So um, yeah, this, so hopefully uh, if you have want more information about that, you can look up shapenevada.org. Um, we do monthly workshops that can help you get CUs and things like that. So. If you're interested in, in that, go to the website and you can um, get more information about that. So I am a national presenter. I presented all over the country. I presented at um, Shape Nationals last year in, in New Orleans. And um, I was also the 2021 Las Vegas Raiders uh, hometown grant recipient. Yes, thank you, Janae, for putting the, the website in there. So um, what we're gonna be going over today is using technology, You know, uh, some resources that you can use, and then at the very end, I'm going to give you a QR code that will give you all of the resources that I have in this presentation. So the first one we're going to do is, you know, using using tech in your classroom. Um, why do I choose to use uh, projectors and technology, and um, some of the things that I I do to uh, incorporate it? So the reason why I think technology is valuable in, in physical education is it gives whole group instruction with allowing me to have movement throughout the classroom um, to help students with either cues or pinpointing instruction. Um, so having because at my classroom, and we'll go over this a little bit more later, I have two projectors. So all the students have their their squad spots and they're able to face the same direction. And so when we do warm ups or instant activities or cool downs or other uh, different activities in front of the classroom, I'm able to, it's almost like having a second teacher in the classroom because they're able to, to see it, practice it, and then I can walk through the classroom and kind of help them uh, understand it better. So the first thing that the number one question when I get is my, uh, what's my number one piece of technology that I love? And it's my projectors. And so uh, open phys ed, which is a, the open uh, physical education network, they, they put out a uh, quarterly magazine, and one of the articles that they did was put out by Kevin Tiller, who's Phys Ed Review. I'll go over some of his stuff later, but he wrote this great article on how to find the perfect projector for you. And so he went over four tips to look for um, when you're picking out a projector for your classroom. So the first one he went over was price, and, and obviously that's the biggest one with you know whatever budget you have in your for your school or if you have to get one yourself the second one would be the lumens which is basically the brightness of it and so when you're looking for a projector you want to get at least a 2000 lumens so you have it bright enough to um to use in any light um in the classroom like luckily i have a double classroom and i have a lot of light in my my space so um it also um, has shades that I can cover everything. So when I turn on the projector, it's easy to see it. Um, the third one he wanted to talk about was um, what type of projector you'd want, a regular projector, a short throw projector, or an ultra short throw uh, projector. A regular projector, and that basically is, is defining the space between the projector and the screen. Um, so in my class, I have my projectors mounted to the ceiling but if you look into the into this um article and there's going to be a the, the link in this will take you to the the entire um magazine with the article in it but you'll see he has his projector extremely close to his screen and he has a, a orange crate protecting it and that's so um 
that's so like when, when he's doing his activities in the classroom, he's not um, having anything hit his projector, or have anything, you know, something go wrong with it. So in that case, that kind of projector wouldn't work in my classroom because of the space that I that I use, utilize, I would have nowhere to put it that close and not have it affect my classroom. So that's why I, I have what is called a short throw projector. And it comes from, like I said, it's mounted to my ceiling, but it's close um, and it's there's no chance of a student hitting it, knocking it down or having it um, be affected. And then the fourth thing he talks about is whether you, what type of screen you need or if you need a screen at all. Luckily, I have two giant um, whiteboards. So I just use those as my screens and that, um, that helps out a lot. When I have a class size of 60, uh, my average class size is between 40 to 60. Um, having a double classroom, it's a double classroom without the middle divider. And so it's a replica, it's a basically a duplicate on both sides. So I have, a, you know, the doors, the two whiteboards. So it's, it's great to split the class in two right down the middle and kind of evens it out for me. And so this is kind of an example of my classroom, what I was talking about. Um, the, the squad spots are a big thing to make my program work. So there are 60 dots on the ceiling and they're they're numbered and they're color coded, and that gives them about three feet by three feet of space so they can safely do activities without, you know, bumping into the other person. And it's a great way to work on personal space and um, open space and things like that. And so I'm able to do a lot of activities, you know, using hockey sticks, basketballs, soccer balls, hula hoops, things like that. And they can safely do it in their space as long as they stay in their squad spot. So that's one of the things that we, we focus on. Um, in the beginning of the school year, um, because without doing that part about the learning about the importance of this, the squad spot and personal space and, and um, open space, then we can't do the rest of my program. So that's like a huge part of uh, incorporating the technology was how are you going to how are you going to manage it, manage it in your classroom? So this was how I figured out that by having two two projectors linked to one um, laptop. So I'm putting up all my activities and they're, they're showing on both of them. Like I said, with this space, I can clearly see the rows and I can walk down the rows and it gives a great chance for, like I said, for me to, you know, pinpoint um, any instruction, give them cues, help them, or just give them any of the pointers or make those connection pieces of walking around the classroom. So um, the other part of technology that I that is a big part is, is a Bluetooth speaker. Um, anything Ion is a great brand. There's tons of ways to incorporate your classroom to to make it fun using music because I do like uh, DJ suggestion boxes. So I'll have a shoe box and if a kid likes kid wants to do a song, they'll put it in and I'll I'll go and um, you know review the lyrics and stuff and then we add it to our class playlist or you can go on Spotify and there are tons of physical education playlists that are clean and kid friendly. Um, it's awesome when we're doing an activity with scarves and we're just you know practicing skills and tracking and things like that, but we're, we're playing a song that they love and the whole classroom is singing and um, it just adds that environment and makes it a lot of fun. So I could not do my class without my projectors and this would definitely be number two. I could not teach my class without my Bluetooth speaker. So one of the main things that I wanted to make sure was that when you leave this presentation, that you have resources that you can take and use in your classroom right away. And so these are some uh, resources that I've created and that other people have created. Um, and if you'll see that there's a Twitter handle of the person who created it. So if it was me, it'll be there. If it's somebody else and their Twitter handle will be under there. But if you click on these, it will make a copy and put it into your drive. One of the biggest activities that I do is the Beat Sabers activity, where there's the picture in the corner. Um, I have, again, the squad spots. I give everyone two pool noodles, and I have this video, and the uh, Beat Saber is from, is a VR game, and it's a musical game, and so, like, boxes are coming to you, and you're cutting the boxes, and it's working on um, timing and rhythm and uh, directional because they have to go left right and it also has the fun movement parts of it they're ducking they're dodging and um it's a lot of fun because it's songs that they know so again they're singing they're enjoying it and they're having fun 
But um, if you click on the Beat Saber link, it's going to have a drive full of um, Um, if you click on the Beat Saber link, then it's um, going to have take you to the drive where it has tons of, of videos that I created that you could use. Like I said, you can um, do it at home and they could have pencils or you can do it in the classroom and have using pool noodles. Um, I just get a pool noodle and, and cut it in half. So it's six foot pool noodle. It's two, three feet pool noodles. And um, like I said, each student gets two. It's a lot of fun and they really enjoy it. I just saw a question or a comment from Derek, so I was reading that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Any way to save money? Um, I do. I I do a lot of inside of my uh, inside classroom stuff and then outside classroom stuff, so it works for both. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's been dependable. I use it for field day. It seems like the battery lasts for a long time and it, um, the sound carries, I guess, or I guess it's powerful. I don't know how to say that one. Oh no, no worries. No, don't interrupt. I, I like the interaction. So if you, um, like I said, if you click on any of this stuff, it will take you and it'll tell you to make a copy of it. If you make a copy, then, um, it will add the copy in your drive. I'll just talk about it. So. So the, the mass Singer, my students enjoyed it because, again, when I'm creating um, activities for the students, I'm trying to meet, meet them in the middle, things that they're interested in. Like if I know my class um, is really enjoying a movie or a TV show that year, I'm going to have a lot of activities that are based off of that. Uh, in last year is Encanto, and um, it seemed like every day I was doing some other Encanto activity. Um, this year... It seems like it's a mixture of things, but um, finding out what your students enjoy and then creating activities or finding activities based on that, because um, our goal is we want to get them moving and we want them to fall in love with moving and we want to keep them active and things like that. But that's our goal. And the vehicle that we use to get to that goal, that's where we could fill in with, you know, the mass Singer, where um, I just had... It's not loading right now, but what it is, is just like the, the um, TV show, there would be a picture of um, like a mascot and there would a song, there'd be a song playing like uh, I have songs like Justin Bieber or Elvis and things like that. And then it, they have to guess which one it is. And, you know, it would be like one, uh, if it's Elvis, do jumping jacks. If you th think of it's the other person, do burpees and um, they they love doing it that way. So that's just a way to make it fun. I broke this out by resource, by categories. Hold on. There we go. Oh. All right, so here's some rhythm and dance um, resources. Musical Jeopardy was a lot of fun. Um, it's play out just like Jeopardy. Again, where you have to answer not with your words, but with your body movements. Um, I think the number one thing I tell my students is don't tell me, show me. And so um, they have fun doing it that way. Beat sabers, dance, dance moves. Again, open phys ed, I'm gonna talk about them later on. But if you're not familiar with open, Phys Ed. Um, it's a free resource. Uh, and actually, Shape Nevada just brought in uh, Brian DeVore. This was a couple weeks ago, um, but it was a great presentation on the resources that they provide. And again, it's 100% free. Um, they come with their lesson plans. They come with um, cues, the, the essential questions. They, they really break it down to make it simpler and it's not recreating the wheel. They even have vocabulary cards that you can print out. So it's, it's really a great resource. And again, it's 100% free. 
so again there's more um there's tons of it there's fitness drumming um if you're not familiar with that my my students love that um we do fitness drumming with pool noodles and a giant uh, yoga ball and then just a, um, a 17 gallon bucket uh, we just got a bunch of uh giant yoga balls from five below and so obviously they're five dollars and for, with free shipping it was the best deal to get and then the, the the pool noodles, I use them for tons of activities. So it um, it was a great way to do that. So there's tons of resources on that. There's tons of cross curricular activities that you could use. Um, these are all the activities that I use on the, the projectors when I start class or as a cool down or um, as a fun um, in, uh, transitional activity. So I try to, one year I had to have um, place value is my SLG. So luckily there's a great um, educator named Cindy Liu and she made this place value um, activity where the students had to okay I'm gonna stop trying to do that. This where the students um, had to show the place value of the randomized number and then the there'd be a little line under the number and they had to show if it was a thousands hundreds tens and ones so it was a great way for me to help the students um, strengthen those skills from uh from the classroom here's a few uh, health and wellness ac activities that you could do uh, a nutrition 101 a hyper um hyper doc Oh, no, um, these are just for me, or I'm sorry, these are just for the presentation right now. At the very end, I'm going to send you, the, I'm going to send you, or not send you, I'm sorry, there's going to be a QR code. You'll scan the QR code, and then it will be in your drive, and then you can click on all of these. So you get a copy of this, and like I said, you click on each one, and it will make a copy in your drive. No worries. So, okay. All right. So here's, uh, yeah, no, uh, open phys ed is, is a quality resource. I, they have, and the, they break it down by grade level. They break it down by subject that they break it down by themes. They can help with field day. They help with, uh, fitness based stations. Um, oh, I gotta blow my nose one second. So sorry. All right. Um, I have to double check. I know they. I thought they had some high school ones. Um, it might be labeled labeled something different. I have to go check. Go through and check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. So um, here's some, like I said, health and wellness stuff. So there's there's a hyper doc where, where you could send out to the students and they can work on their Chromebook, it helps them learn about nutrition, uh, building a healthy meal, um, sh learning about sugar, junk food and healthy food. How do I feel? Um, again, these are just resources that you can use. Um, throughout the day um, that you could take back and use hopefully right away. Okay, components of fitness, level movements and balance, I spies, this or that. So, and so that brings me on to my next thing. I wanna show you, if you're not familiar with vid video link, what I do is if I find a video on YouTube, I will put it into this and it will create a safe link that um, I can give out to my students. Cause you know, as this says, kids are usually about three clicks away from inappropriate content on YouTube and most schools have YouTube blocked. So this is a workaround for you to, to still use it. Um, and again, it helped me during when we had, had to use our Canvas because um, it counts how many times the students um, 
like watch the video. So it keeps track of that for you. So you can see, and it just helps how many times the students are actually viewing your content. But this is a great resource. And I use this one every day. Um, like I said, it just, it's safer to use. And then it also helps for if the internet goes out because it does download the video. Um, and so if the internet goes out, I'm still able to play the video because it's, it's downloaded on it. Um, some YouTube channels that I frequently go to is um, right here, and this you, you'll have tons of things to, to go over, whether it be um, fitness-based, um, skill-based, um, uh, there's dancing, there's movement, there's creating your own, um, creating your own equipment, uh, a lot of at-home stuff, so there's probably hours of, of stuff that you can look through and check it out. I just wanted to give you a few of them. And then by clicking on, on these ones, you'll get, you know, obviously referred to other ones. So it's a great connection. This is another piece of technology that, that um, I use in my classroom. It's a great way for me to connect with other teachers or with other subjects. So I was awarded this grant by, un, by Unruly Splats. And what unruly splats are is they're these little square things. And I have one right here. So I have one right here. And so this splat is, it's a, it has 18 different points that the students can touch or hit. And so with the help with the, the, with the librarian and the science teacher, um, they go and they learn about coding and they code to make a game. And then we do that activity in PE. And so um, some of the games that the students have created have been really fun. Um, there've been like Simon games where, or tic-tac-toe games. One student recreated the beep test, which I, I loved it. And I'm like, it's kind of, it was just kind of like the pacer test. Um, so, um, I thought it was really cool, but it, it has different colors and different reactions, but it's a great way to, again, introduce the kids to coding. So with the help of those three subjects, science, li uh, library, and PE, we're able to come together and, and have this really great unit um, that we do about uh, once or twice a year. Some of the visuals that that I do in my classroom, Comic Life is a big one. Um, if you spend, they have a special price for teachers, it's $19.99 for a lifetime licensed copy. And it just, all of my visuals in my classroom are based off of this because it just gives that comic book feel and those bright colors and um, cool graphics, I guess. And so some of them that I've made is I made this on Comic Life. This was a meet and greet flyer that um, I gave to the students and to the parents on um, back to school night or in the meet and greet, just introducing myself, my program, giving them our, our year overview, talking about the whole school, whole child model, and just giving them some contact information. But it, as you can see, it just gives it like that bright, colorful kind of look to it, and I guess cartoony, but seeing that I am K through five, it's, it's a great way to um, be kind of eye popping, I guess. Some other things that I did was uh, create classroom job badges. So there, I have about seven jobs. This is one of the badges. So if a student can't participate because you know they broke their arm or some, some other reason they can't participate, um, then I give them one of these jobs. And so the equipment team manager, um, this one is, you, know, you will assist Mr. Z in setting up and taking down activities. This job is very important to the success of class, great work. I also give this badge if they're showing you know, good, good pillar, the pillars of character that we explained at the beginning of the school year. But this is also something that I created in, in comic life. Like I said, kind of like just that um, popping graphics, popping lettering, and it, it just, um, it's something that I enjoyed. May, I make uh, skill cube posters. So I have posters like this hanging on the wall so they could see, um, you know, the, the cues of catching. So, you know, I can remind them those cues, things like that, but just having those visual reminders around the classroom. I see students all the time stopping and reading these posters because again, it catches their eye. They wanna see what it says, the cool pictures, things like that. Um, sometimes I'll use 
comic book characters, Teen Titans, things like that. Again, things that they they like. Um, I have a poster on my my wall of Fortnite, but it's solely talking about the value of water, but it's comparing it to the shield or something like that from Fortnite. I don't even know, but it was a great comparison because they have like this blue shield bottle. And so um, they get the connection. And my goal is I just want them to, to uh, drink water. So um, next thing we'll go over is we'll talk over some more resources that, um, that you can do. Glenn on YouTube, uh, talking about Glenn Higgin fitness. Um, he does great activities. So he, he is, um, he loves working out. So, but he loves doing workout videos dressed as cool characters like Spider-Man and Iron Man and Star Wars. And, um, he'll do, uh, he just did one as a black Panther. And so, you know, I could tell them to run and do jumping jacks, you know, all I want, but it's a lot more fun when, when we're doing it with Spider-Man and Iron Man and things like that. So it's, it's, again, is, um, trying to meet them in the middle and, finding that vehicle that's going to reach the students to make them uh, excited about doing the activity. Um, Southdown PE is owned by Lynn Hefley. She does some great physical snacks, which are short videos that talk about different components of fitness. And so being elementary, again, it's, it's a great way to introduce those, those concepts to the kids because it's, it's stop motion graphics and uh, she does voices and things like that so it's just a great way to to look at it um, and like keep the kids interested phys ed review um that again is kevin tiller the guy that was um talking that i was talking about with the projectors he does tons of activities with equipment that i can do in my squad spots the super sevens is a great one they do scarves you know um one of them is, you know, like I said, hockey sticks, um, uh, a paddle and, a, and a, a soft ball, just different things that uh, manipulatives that I can give to the, the kids that they can do in their three foot by three foot space safely. Um, and it's a great way to work on different skills. So I, you know, I use a projector and the music and it's ready to do it, ready to play. So it's a lot of fun and my students really enjoy them. Also, you'll have access to this, uh, this, Twitter search link. So I think Twitter is a great free resource um, for finding activities. So this was a resource created by, um, by phys ed. Um, I think this is, I forgot his name, but his, his thing, his uh, resources, his um, Twitter is right there. If you click on it, once you get this resource, you'll be able to click on it and, um, and it will take you to his Twitter page. But if you look at each one of these subjects, you'll be able to click on it. And again, it will show either a video image or links to different things. So whatever your, your unit is um, or what you're doing, if like an obstacle course or field day, or if you wanna use pool noodles, you could get some ideas. And again, this is 100% free. Um, I think that's a great thing about PE teachers is they, they love to just share everything. The more we share, the more, the, the better we become as teachers. Um, if you if you are on Twitter and you want to find a way to follow um, some some great quality educators, this was created by Becky Fulmer, and I'll talk a little bit more about her later. But this is a quick, fast way to to um, get connected with all of these people um, on Twitter at once. So you install the, the Twitter extension, then you click on this link. If you're in physical education or if you're in health, if you're in social studies, if you're in science, if you're in elementary or ELA. So it's kind of broken down by groups. So if you if you click on that, it will actually start, it will start to follow all of those people. So I use Twitter as a as a as a um, a great personal, a professional learning community because you know like I said is once you do that it just fills it up and, and just different ideas and um, it's a great way to to uh, spark those ideas that you can bring back to the classroom. So if you're not familiar uh, cbhpe.org is an amazing website that could help you out with um, numerous things I can't even begin to tell you uh, so I just took a snippet of some of the things that they can help you with. Um,
Yes. Yes. They, yeah. They have, it's a, uh, yeah, it's perfect for Chromebook stuff. And there's definitely some high school stuff in that as well. Um, like just in this one, it says it's talking about um, breakout rooms, escape rooms, um, scope and sequence, movement cues, um, household items, things like that. So um, you could spend hours looking through their website because again, it's a it's a website that they keep adding resources from other teachers, and so it's a great way to look for you know again ideas and that that spark that interest because. The goal is hopefully these these things will give you an idea to create something on your own. But of course, you know, use it. If you love it, use it. There's also the global PE folder, which it's a, again a free folder that has tons of resources. Teachers have been adding to this folder for years. And so there's tons of high school resources, middle school, elementary school from teacher of the years, from uh, great quality educators. Um, and like I said, all of this stuff is free. Open PE, um, like I said, their, their mission statement is to improve the effectiveness of physical education for every child. We help teachers help their students by providing rigorous outcome-based curriculum tools to every physical education teacher, no, no exceptions. So that it, like I said, it's a free thing, just sign up and just browse through that. And hopefully you could find a couple things that you could take away from that. My goal from this presentation was hopefully that you could leave with one or two or three things that you could take back to the classroom that you can use right away. Um, so, thank you. So, um, how I'm gonna give you the resources that I have is, is from uh, the QR code. So, if you don't have a QR code, mo well, most phones, when you just point the QR code, it will show you the, the folder. But if you don't have one, all you have to do is just go to your, your app store and download one. But this is this is the QR code for this drive, for this folder, for this presentation. I don't know why I said folder, but um, it's a QR code for this, for this presentation. And then you'll have all of those resources that I talked about. You'll be able to click on them, uh, make a copy, and then you can adjust it to, to however, what would help her, however it would impact your students most. But um, yeah, so I'll keep that up for a little bit. The next slide is, oh yeah, I am kind of early. So hopefully we have some questions. So um, the next part is just talking about um, just questions or comments, or if there's any, any, um, I say any questions about anything we talked about today. I'll keep this up for, for a while longer. Or is there anything that we want that anyone wants to go over more? Because I can go back and we could talk about one of the things if I went over it too quickly. Yeah, let me do that. I can do I can do that for you. So Jesse, they're asking for an email. There. I just um I just sent um that's the link that we can do. Um hopefully that helps. Okay, yeah, that's getting everybody in, looks like. Perfect. So yeah, let me go back and, and
So since I do have a few more minutes, I did want to talk about like, so I said is I am the president of Shape Nevada. So, and Shape Nevada is a society for health and physical educators. And so um, we are, we are Nevada's branch under Shape America, which is the, the governing body of health and PE across the United States. It's one of the organizations that we, um, that supports health and PE across the United States. So, um, what we do is we do monthly workshops where, um, and we actually have one coming up on December 12th, de sorry, December 3rd, and we have a wonderful adapted PE um, presenter, That's and uh, she will be presenting on 12-3 at 9 o'clock, and like I said, it's going to give you, um, at the end of that presentation, we send you out a link um, that will send you a certificate, a certificate from the, ne 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 I can't speak today. Sorry. I'm trying to like recover from, from something, <laughs> but, um, uh, so at the end of the presentation, we'll give you a link that will generate a certification from the Nevada Department of Education, which will certify you for 1.5 recertification hours, or you can use those as CUs. So we do those, uh, those monthly workshops, uh, once a month. And we also have a workshop in Reno on February 4th in person. Um, so that's something else to look forward to. So that's just some of the things that we, we do as an, an organization. Um, if you wanna know more about that, um, the, the link, the website was shared earlier, but I will um, put it in again. It's shapenevada.org. There we go. Yeah. So, um, and, and it has my contact information. If you have any questions or any comments, or um, if you just want to kind of uh, talk about, you know, different things, then uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you're interested in joining the, the organization, there's different, you can look into that as well. So I will say, Does anyone have any questions before we get going? I know I'm a few minutes early, but that will give us a, a ch chance to kind of go maybe use the restroom and other things before closing ceremony. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this um, presentation. If there's nothing else that I can, that uh, if there's no questions, then um, have a wonderful weekend and happy holidays. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna send out the survey just to make sure everybody got it. So hold on. All right. Thank you, Jesse, by the way. You did a really good job. Thank you. No, I tried. I said, I think I'm fighting something, but yeah. yeah. But, there's the survey. Yeah, I think that's the, the downside to, to do an elementary school. I feel like half the time I work in a Petri dish. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't think that any teacher, <laughs> you guys get it worse, I think, just because yeah. little kids carry everything, but yeah, it's always like that. The, the kindergartners, Mr. Z, Mr. Z. I'm like, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go, go back home. <laughs> yeah, but hey, but I love my job. I, I, I wouldn't yeah. do anything else. Yeah, no kidding. It was room seven, right? Yes, it's room seven, Pamela. I'm sorry. I heard put that on there. all right well i'm gonna hang out until the time's up but i'm gonna go okay. ahead and stop the video now okay okay all right